So Apple iPhone 15 was presented and the response has not been fantastic. Broadly speaking, a lot of people were disappointed with iPhone 15. They weren't impressed with what Apple brought to the table with this new flagship product. What does this tell us about the tech market? What does this tell us or teach us about technology in general? So in a nutshell, people were not impressed with the new iPhone because there was no major upgrades, no wow changes. One of the expectations that they were going to be going to a three nanometer chip uh, processor, which they did, but that didn't equate to a huge speed increase. Now, if you don't know, the uh, the more compact the chip, for lack of better speaking, when you go from five man nanometer to three nanometer to two nanometer, which they haven't done yet, but less nanometers, the faster the chip goes because there's less space in between, I think they're called transistors, but I'm not a hardware guy. But anyway, so this new technology, this three nanometer chip, first time this type of technology was being brought to a smartphone, people were assuming that there was going to be a huge speed increase. But as far as I understand, it's only about a 10% speed increase. That's uh, how we measure it anyway, academically. But in terms of real world use, we don't really know if 10% is going to make much of a difference most of the time. Probably not. But apparently in some, uh, some of the video rendering uh, aspects or the engine, it, it's significantly faster, or at least fast enough to make a difference in certain circumstances. But generally speaking, the three nanometer chip update didn't do so well, didn't have the impact that people were looking for. The cameras are a little bit better, but apparently not hugely better. So what does this tell us about technology in general? In a nutshell, smartphones have hit the inevitable plateau that you see in technology. So I've been getting hit with uh, these robocalls and these random callers always hitting my phone all the time. We all get them. And as it turns out, you have these companies that gather your data and sell it to these companies, other companies, and then they start harassing you. It's a real pain. So I looked into it and there's a service called Aura, who is the sponsor of this video. And they provide a suite of tools that's easy to use to identify the companies who have your data and then contact the companies and tell them to stop contacting you. They have to do this legally, so it works out well. So if you're getting hit with all these calls and you want to find a way to reduce them and just protect your overall security online, it's something to check out. In addition to the data broker removal, Aura provides a whole bunch of other tools included, including identity and credit monitoring, password manager, antivirus protection, VPN, home title monitoring, a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of services wrapped up in one simple to use app. It's something worth checking out. Today, the internet is a wild, wild place and you gotta protect your identity. And so instead of getting a VPN from this company and antivirus from this company and so on, Here's a nice convenient package for you for a reasonable price. Check out the links below. There is a two week free trial, no obligation. And uh, yeah, let's continue. I've seen this happen many times. I've seen it in software development where software development pretty much hit a plateau, I would argue around 2014, 2015, uh, TVs, flat panel TVs. Uh, the only thing that has changed much in these TVs, they get a little bit bigger and cheaper. If you look at four-year-old TV technology, you have to have a real discerning eye to tell the difference between a four-year-old OLED versus a brand new OLED today. Yes, they're better today, but are they so much better that most people are going to notice? Only maybe side by side. The only difference is they gotten a little bit cheaper, a little bit cheaper, a little bit cheaper, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Incremental improvement. In the early days, when flat panels first came out with uh, LCD and plasma, there was a huge difference between the top of the line TV and the bottom line. It was not even close. Now, that uh, differential between the most premium and the entry level has really compressed quite a bit. Bottom line is you can get a really nice TV for not too much money. Same thing with smartphones. The entry level smartphones are so powerful t these days that... Uh, Companies, whether it be Apple or Samsung or whatnot, they're having a hard time differentiating between the top of the line and the middle middle level or the entry level phones. You have to be a real uh, picky nerd to really care. So what does this tell us about technology? All technology goes through this inevitable 
evolution of when it first comes out, you see a lot of rapid changes in the first several years. And then at some point, it hits a plateau where you don't really see too many changes, and that could go on for a long, long time. Why is that? Well, the mountain is only so high. When you get to the top of the mountain, you're at the top of the mountain. The mountain doesn't get any higher. That's an analogy, but the point is, is that screens, ref uh, refresh rates, thinness of the phone, feature set speed, it can only go so far. You know, yes, the phone may be 10% faster, but when you're doing your day-to-day -day task, scrolling and watching videos and stuff, is it going to make that much of a difference? Will that 10% make a difference? Will that incremental improvement make a difference in terms of your actual use of the device? In most cases, the answer is no. I've seen this in software development where in the early days, I, I started coding in the 1990s professionally, uh, every year you would see big changes or every other year, big changes. And it made a big difference. I would adopt new technology every now and then that was so revolutionary that it would increase my productivity multiples. That Those days are gone. Those days are gone. That's why when I tell people today, when you're choosing the language you want to choose, whether it be Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, TypeScript, whatever it is, or whatever library or framework you want to choose, React, Vue, Angular, that's the front end, or you want to go PHP Laravel or... Uh, whatever, Python, Django, ExpressJS, whatever. They're all pretty good. You can see examples of great apps written in all these technologies. It's just we've hit a plateau. So I'm going to give you some advice about how to look at this from a point of view of a developer and where the innovation is going to be. So from a developer point of view, in terms of innovation, if you're learning development, learn your fundamentals well. Then... You know, once you build some projects and you get it going, then you, you know, the fundamentals include all the languages, the basic, well, the key languages, the framework, or the frameworks that you might want to learn. Then you want to get into best practices like refactoring and design patterns. Then in terms of productivity, you may want to look at AI code completion tools. You may want to look at, well, you should look at it. Also look at a low code and no code platforms. There's Airtable. As one example, Wix is coming out with a pretty powerful solution. It's both uh, it's full stack and there are others. So that's where you want to look for, look at rather as a developer to find some sort of advantage in the marketplace. Again, this is normal. All the technologies that we use today, um, not all, but a lot of them anyway, they replace what we used to have to do in the past. So I'm happy for that. What we had to do in the early 90s in terms of developing web apps, we don't have to do anymore. For I'll give you some easy examples. Um, web frameworks. We, we used to always develop our own web apps from scratch, trying to come up with our own uh, frameworks and libraries. I did. But I'm happy to say today you have Django, you have Laravel, you have Express, you have Boot for uh, Java, etc., and so on. So a lot of things we have to do uh, by hand, from scratch every time, authentication layers, uh, database access layers, um, validation routines, uh, paging, page pagination um, for the front end, all these type of things. We don't have to do that anymore, and that's great. So don't look at things like Airtable and other low-code, no-code platforms as competition to you. They are not. They are tools to use. So what do I see the innovation in a broader sense, in terms of tech, my guess is going to be in AI. Although, according to the founder of um, the ChatGPT guy, I forget his name all of a sudden, he was saying that AI as it is, it's kind of hit a plateau right now, and you won't see any major changes for a while. That's according to him. So you got AI and how it's going to be implemented and integrated into normal business practices and development practices. And there's also VR and AR. So Oculus, Apple's got their thing. There's other Sony's got their things. Now, am I saying this is going to be a huge, big thing? I don't know. I have the Oculus. It's cool. Until those devices become smaller, not so big. They have to be much smaller, miniaturized. I don't see them taking over the way smartphones did. Who knows? Those are the two things I'd be looking at. So that's normal. Again, it's hard to say where the new big technology 
explosion is going to be. It could be AI, it could be VR, AR. I remember a few years ago when crypto and Web3 came out and NFTs and everybody going, oh my God, that's the future. It's going to replace everything. It's all about this. And I warned people. I said, eh, no, it's going to be a niche technology. I'm not, I'm not trashing the tech. I just feel it's too specialized. It was too specialized. And of course, it didn't take over the world. It's become a very specialized, marginalized tech that's being implemented but in the way I had suggested in multiple videos and, and uh, expected, and that's what's going on. So AI is going to be much more widely distributed into the ecosystem of our economy. All these different levels, whether it be visual or text-based AI, code completion, uh, VR, AR, mm, that's far more niche than AI uh, until they get this thing going. If they get the thing going, meaning they get the, uh, the, gog the goggles to be much more efficient, much smaller, then it might explode. But right now, I'd say v, VR, AR is good and it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay niche until that time. Maybe Apple's new device will be a game changer. I doubt it. It seems a bit too big for me, but I could be wrong. Anyway, I hope this video is useful. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development and coding and so many other things. Check out my mentoring program below. UncleSteph.com. Thanks for watching the video.